Good morning. Welcome to the Church of St. Paul the Apostle. Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday in Ordinary Time. The readings and lyrics for today's hymns can be found in the bulletin and on the Church of St. Paul the Apostle app. Please stand and join in singing our processional hymn, Now Thank We All Our God. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you, and, and the warmth of the love of God be with you. Thank you for turning out. I don't think I'm going to go out of the building today, so you guys, more points than the priests. So we gather around in the cold or whatever winter because we believe that truly our God is in our midst. We call, we call this first part of the Mass the gathering rite, and that doesn't just mean that we show up and find our pew but that somehow God gathers us together as one. We're all different individuals, but it is God that makes of us one community. So we begin by acknowledging the ways in which we have been selfish and non-communal and non-other-centered, and we allow God's mercy and forgiveness to create us anew this day.
Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you. A prophet to the nations, I appointed you. But do you gird your loins? Stand up and tell them all that I command you. Be not crushed on their account, as though I would leave you crushed before them. For it is I this day who have made you a fortified city, a pillar of iron, a wall of brass against the whole land, against Judah's kings and princesses, against its priests and people. They will fight against you, but not prevail over you. For I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts, but I shall show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in human angelic tongues, 
but do not have love. I am a resounding gong or a clashing cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. <coughs> if I give away everything I own, and if I hand my body over so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It is not jealous, it is not pompous, it is not inflated, it is not rude. It does not seek its own interest. It is not quick-tempered, it does not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. If there are prophecies, they will be brought to nothing. If tongues, they will cease. If knowledge, it will be brought to nothing. For we know partially and we prophesy partially. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I used to talk as a child, think as a child, reason as a child. When I became a man, I put aside childish things. At present, we see indistinctly as in a mirror, but then face to face. At present, I know partially. Then I shall know fully as I am fully known. So faith, hope, love remain, these three, but the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. My friends in Christ, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus began speaking in the synagogue, saying, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke highly of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They also asked, Isn't this the son of Joseph? He said to them, Surely you will quote me this proverb, Physician, cure yourself, and say, Do here in your native place the things that we have heard were done in Capernaum. And he said, Amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was closed for three and a half years, and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in Zarephath in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers 
in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet. Yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were filled with fury. They rose up, drove him out of town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built to hurl him down headlong. But Jesus passed through the midst of them and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, maybe some of your favorite drama shows, week after week, begin the episode by recapping what has happened. Sometimes they'll say, previously on Billions. Maybe you've seen that. And they do little frames of what happened. So you go, oh yeah, okay, I see. We kind of do that today. This is actually somewhat rare. Typically, our gospel readings on Sundays do somewhat go in order, but usually each, each passage is, is distinct. And when we start a new Sunday, it feels like kind of a whole new story. But this week, we start with previously on Luke. <clears throat> because last week, we had Jesus showing up in the temple, choosing a section of the Old Testament scriptures, and saying to them, this is fulfilled. It was a prophecy about the Messiah. He says, this is fulfilled in your hearing. And we repeat that line at the beginning of today's gospel passage to let us know that these two are really linked here. But what happens here is kind of the typical act two. Act one was great. Everyone's like, oh, wow, he's good. What a great preacher. And he's saying that we're going to heal everybody and the blind will see. These are good words. And then today he kind of gives them the other piece. Yeah, but... This probably won't happen to you. God may have to look to people other than you, other than the chosen people. Those are the two examples. They may sound a little odd. The two examples that he gives from the Old Testament are times when God had to go outside of the chosen people and appeal to and save and do miracles for non-Jews. Couldn't say anything more offensive in a synagogue so that's why they wanted to hurl him off a cliff. But there's this one line that here in Luke, I mean, only as a, as a foretaste, this, this same event is portrayed in the Gospel of Mark, and we get a little bit more of the angry reaction from the townspeople. Here in Luke, he says, but wait a minute, isn't this Joseph's son? In Mark, we hear a lot more of them saying, who is this? Who is he to tell us? He's just a carpenter boy. Essentially, they're saying, who does he think he is? It seems to me that is the central question of all of today's scriptures. Because Jesus knows who he is. If he didn't, he probably would pull some punches and, and just give the good news and maybe hold back on that part about, yeah, God's probably going to pick Gentiles, not you guys. Okay, got to go. <laughs> he knew who he was. He is God. So the question more pointedly for you and I is, who do you think you are coming here to this church in the cold who do you think you are? Who do you know that you are? Jesus had to be confident in his identity as the Son of God. In order to be true to himself, to true to, true to God's call, and to not be swayed by what people thought of him, or even the pushback that he got, or even in this case, people trying to kill him. That doesn't happen as easily unless we know who we are. There's a lot of talk these days about discovering our identity, 
finding yourself. Boy, there's more self-help magazines and self-help books than probably anything else. But the author, Robert Brult, has said this, never mind searching for who you are. Search for the person you aspire to be. We are, and therefore should aspire to be, like Jesus, children of God. So who do you think you are? I don't think that author was talking about not doing the important work of finding our identity and our place in the world, because we are children of God and we are many other things. We are our racial background and our culture. We are our sexual and gender identity. We are our political party. Can't escape that these days. We are, many of us, New Yorkers. We are a lot of things. And yet, who do we think we are as children of God? And how, as that is encouraging, can we aspire to be when it doesn't feel like we're that, when we don't feel as confident as Jesus? Would it be easier for you and I to say to an angry crowd some tough words that we knew were not going to go well for us? Would we be able to escape as easily if they were trying to push us off a hill? Who do you think you are? Well, God gives us a little help today. First of all, in uh, in our opening Old Testament reading, we hear the first few verses of the book of Jeremiah. And next week, we'll hear another call of a prophet. Very similar. Inevitably, the prophets in the Old Testament always say, oh, Lord, I'm not that. And God says, yes, you are. I know who you are. Jeremiah says, I'm too young. We don't hear that part, actually. They excise that in our passage. But his response is, no, 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 not me. God says, I know who you are since before I formed you in your mother's womb. An appropriate notion about a week after we celebrate the pro-life march in Washington, D.C. God knows and has given us our identity, even when we don't see it. Jeremiah didn't see it at first. And we hear the way to get there in our second reading. Now, you may have thought that you accidentally stumbled into a wedding, right? 1 Corinthians 13, classic. I think Shirley is available for weddings. She does a nice job with that reading. It can become so trite, right? We've seen it in calligraphy. We've heard it countless times from the cousin or uh, bride's groom who don't proclaim it as well as our lectors here, sometimes. But it can become just trite poetry. But in fact, what was happening at the time that Paul was writing to the Corinthians was not a wedding. Paul wasn't setting out to write some beautiful poetry that would be used on Valentine's Day and nuptial ceremonies for thousands of years. They were in conflict. They were fighting over who had the most important gifts. You hear at the end, he talks about the gifts of prophecy and tongues, and you're like, what does that have to do with, my wife doesn't speak in tongues. Well, at the time, in Corinth, they were divided about who had the most important spiritual gifts. So Paul is responding to that. Often Paul's letters are kind of like hearing one side of a conversation. We don't really hear what the other person is saying, so we need to be able to figure that out with the help of our scholars and historians. So they were all a mess. They, they had, Paul had already been there. They'd already been Christians but they were fighting over what it meant to be a Christian. And Paul said, all of that stuff, whether you can prophesy or speak in tongues or you're a great teacher, all that's going to go away. You know what won't? Love. And he talks about, if you look at the qualities that Paul is talking about as well, almost all of them are ways in which we navigate negative situations. Bearing with one another. Being patient, enduring. Doesn't sound like your typical Hallmark stuff. It's not warm and fuzzy. So how do we become who we aspire to be? Those who are created in the image of God? This is a good place to start. 
You've probably heard one of the many ways in which this reading has been preached on over the years, is if we take these classic poetic lines from Paul, love is patient, love is kind, and we substitute in kind of an algebra way. Remember algebra? If A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. So we know that God is love. So if God is love, then we can easily say, God is patient. God is kind. God doesn't keep a record of wrongs. But wait a minute. Our key message today is about our identity as children of God. In fact, created in the image of God. So therefore, we can do that algebra one more step, huh? You are patient. You are kind. You don't keep a record of wrongs. You are not jealous or proud. Right now, you might be thinking, "Uh, sorry, Father Dave, haven't really been living up to that this week. Well, you know what? Neither have I. But that's the point. Don't try to find who you are. Try to find who you aspire to be. St. Paul doesn't give us nice poetry to be calligraphy on the wall. He gives us a challenge to be more of who we are created in God's image and likeness. So I would say the challenge in answering that question this week, who do you think you are, is to take just one of those. If you, you probably have the readings in front of you, either on paper or on the St. Paul's app. Look at that, Saint, that, that Corinthians reading. Pick one thing, whether it's keeping a record of wrongs, enduring, and see how you can let God strengthen that quality in you just this week. Let's not bite off more than we can chew. Lent is coming up, so plenty of sacrifice to come. So for this week, and it's cold, you know, we work a little slower. Let's pick one thing. Being not jealous being not proud, not keeping a record of wrongs. Ooh, that's a a hard one. How do we let that go? Surviving, enduring. Just pick one and begin to answer that question. Who do you think you are as made in the image of God? Can you be a little bit more confident like Jesus, that you are truly created by God in his image and can be assured in your identity, confident, walking through a crowd that is coming at you with all sorts of temptations and criticisms and different ways of thinking than we have. Just like Jesus walking through that crowd, they didn't like what he had to say. That's hard. But when we don't aspire to who we want to be as children of God, we can easily, so easily, be swayed by the waves and lose our identity or do the self-help and find the real me, but not the God in me. So they said this about Jesus. Who does he think he is? Maybe there's one or two people in your life that might say that this week when you begin to practice love. Not Valentine, chocolate, red heart love, but the tough kind of love that is not easy to live. Pick one thing this week. Aspire to it. Work on it. Let God work on you with it. And maybe ask that question a week from now. Who do you think you are?
I invite now our candidates and catechumens for full communion in the church and those preparing to be baptized into the faith to come forward. These candidates and catechumens are being initiated into our Catholic faith community here at St. Paul's. They've been with us today to listen to the scriptures proclaimed in the midst of this assembly. And now, candidates and catechumens, we send you forth with our love and our blessing and the longing for the day that you will join us around this table. For now, go in peace. Let's stand and proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now turn to our God who knew us and called us before we were born and who will provide for our needs and those of the whole world. fidelity in the church. May the proclamation of the gospel comfort those who are disturbed as it disturbs those who are comfortable. For peace in our world, may the efforts of diplomats help nations avoid a military conflict in Ukraine. We pray to you, Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For those athletes gathered to celebrate the Olympics and for those closer to home, may their dedication help us celebrate the human body. greater respect for human life in all its stages of development or dis diminishment. We pray to you, Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety of all those affected by this weekend storm, especially for those who work outside to restore power and transport of goods. We pray to you, Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the Paulist Fathers and their nationwide ministries, may young people respond to the call to serve the church. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for married couples married in or outside the church. May their love bear all things, hope all things, and endure all things. For those who saw the reflection of God in the mirror of their faith lives, may they see God face to face. We pray to you, O Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we share now with God in silence. May these intentions be joined to those of our spiritual fathers, St. Paul and Father Isaac Hecker. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all the prophets, you who redeem your people by a love so patient and kind, Hear these prayers we bring to you through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and loves and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> my sisters and brothers that your sacrifice and mine be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O Lord we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them we pray and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, 
We bless and exalt your name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and, one, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, one supper was ended. He took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, Heavenly Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor upon the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your Church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, religious, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters, Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised to a new hope. 
Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At our Savior's command and formed by his divine love, we now dare to pray. Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. Amen. I believe we have an announcement or two, so stand up if you want the blood flowing. Good morning, everyone. Warm up. <clears throat> Allow me to take one moment of your time. I'm Frank Desiderio, a member of the Presidential Board of the Paulus Fathers, and I am here with Father Eric Andrews, the president of the Paulus, and Father Ivan Tao, who's a member of our general council. Once every four years, members of the presidential board and general council visit every Paulist foundation in the United States to see how things are going. We want to see if the parish is on the Paulist mission and if the people are being well cared for. So that's why we're here. We'll be in the back of the church listening. Pope Francis wants us to be a listening church. So we want to hear from you. What do we want to hear? Well, affirmations. What's going right? Who do you want to pin the medal on? Or recommendations. What could we be doing better? So I'd love to talk to you. We'll be in the back of the church. Thanks very much. Two other quick items. Well, maybe three, I think, uh, but two that I have. One is that the Mustard Seed Guild is planning its annual mission trip this August to the Ogar Emmanuel home in the Dominican Republic, and they are currently recruiting new mission volunteers. For obvious reasons, it'll be the first trip in three years, and the needs of the children there have never been greater. If anyone thinks that they might be interested, there's going to be a Zoom meeting on February 8th. There are also ministry members in the back of the church who will answer questions you may have. Also, this Wednesday is the Feast of the Presentation. There will be a vigil mass on Tuesday night at 6 p.m. in anticipation of the feast day. It's not a holy day of obligation, but it's actually quite a traditional day where people bring from home, or maybe even from the shop, candles to be blessed that you could use even throughout the year. So come on either Tuesday night or Wednesday to have your candles blessed. And then the next day, we'll use some of our freshly blessed candles to bless your throats on the Feast of St. Blaise. February 3rd at our regular daily masses, 7.30 and 12.10. If you come forward to have your throat blessed, please still secure your mask as usual. We'll bless your throat. And it looks like we have one more announcement from Joey. One more brief moment of your time. I'm Joey Chancy, uh, Director of Music here at St. Paul's. And I just wanted to share with you a, a couple quick things that are going on. I know you've been hearing from us over here at the choir a few times this month and through our strategic recruiting tactics, we have been able to welcome 10 new members to the St. Paul Choir, which is awesome. It's exciting and so encouraging, especially after you know the pandemic and COVID displaced many people. Um, the, uh, the dedication that we witness from this, these choir members is so admirable. And we have one of our very own members celebrating 20 years as a member of the St. Paul Choir. And that is our very own Jean Basse. From uh, the bottom of my heart, from everyone here at the Music Ministry in St. Paul's, would certainly like to de uh, thank her for her dedication. It is a blessing to us to have someone like that here at the Music Ministry. So, got to be official with uh, a plaque of appreciation. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go forth, proclaiming the gospel with your lives in love. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.